<laughs> oh yeah, music playing us in. I love it when the music plays us in. Da 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 da. I don't think that's how it goes. I think that's exactly how it goes. <laughs> Listener will let uh, you decide if that's accurate. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Coco and Dalts podcast. I'm not Coco. I'm not going to do it. Well, you're not going to do what? I'm not going to do it. Do what? Because you did the whole, hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I did it in defiance of you because you said before we got on the air, you're not going to do that, are you? <laughs> so you know that that means I'm going to do it. So I'm not going to do it then. Okay. So welcome, everybody. We're here for another podcast. And Coco's here as well. Yes. Um, and tell us, Coco, what did we just freshly watch? We just freshly watched Extraction, a brand new release on Netflix starring Chris Hemsworth and a bunch of other people whose names I don't know. Also, uh, Bollywood stars. Yeah, written by Joe Russo, one of the Russo brothers, mm-hmm. also known for their work in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And uh, I thought it was a movie about... Uh, like pimples? Dental work. <laughs> yeah. I was like thinking facials. this. Oh, I was like, she wants to watch this. <laughs> Hemsworth is like the world's buffest dentist. <laughs> He's like, this is going to hurt a little bit. <laughs> I think we need more Novocaine. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to need a bigger chair. Yeah. So uh, I thought that's what it was going to be about. But no, it was about extracting something else. You want to give us uh, more detail? I mean, when we saw the trailer, didn't you maybe think that all those explosions weren't related to dental work? You don't think I was serious, did you? Oh, I, I, you know, it's Monday. So <laughs> I don't I don't know what's real and what's not. <laughs> it's the it's a coronavirus pandemic. Everything is surreal <laughs> right. right now. We've been in lockdown for a month, so I'm not sure entirely what's going on. So Extraction, uh, like I said, it stars Chris Hemsworth, a.k.a. Thor, He's a mercenary living in Australia. He gets a visit from one of his mercenary buddies. They need to get a kid who has been kidnapped in India. His dad is, I guess, a gangster, and the kid has been kidnapped by a rival gangster, and they need to get the kid away from the rival gangster. They've been promised, I believe, $10 million. But then it turns out that it's a double cross because when they get the kid to the extraction point, one of the kid's dads, uh, like his bodyguard, has been sent in because the kid's dad doesn't have any money because all of his assets were frozen. Because he's in jail. Because he's in jail. So the kid's dad sent one of his guys in to get the kid back so he wouldn't have to pay the extraction fee. And then hijinks ensue. And, Many hijinks. And Chris Hemsworth ends up keeping the kid. And the rest of the movie is kind of devoted to them trying to get out of the city because the rival gangster is obviously very upset that the kid got stolen right out from under him. It's a movie with a very high body count. Oh, man. Uh, violence galore. Lots so, of blood. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of the quick and dirty. What you, would you think, Dalt? I thought that it was... A lot better than I thought it was going to be. (laughs) I was thinking, well, A, you know, dental extraction, not exciting. Right. And then when I found out, B, it's going to be another shoot 'em up I was thinking, well, all right, let's just go for the ride here and see how... (laughs) So I'll, I'll earn got, value, valuable relationship points by watching this movie. We got nothing else to do. We got nothing else to do. It was brand new. It was number one on Netflix as of this viewing uh, I uh, trending. It, I believe it was just released on Friday and today is Monday. So right. this is pretty quick. So this is a brand new movie for us. And yeah. I thought, well, we'll give it a shot. And I was actually really impressed. So I'm, I'm as a listener will know, I'm not really a big fan of the shoot 'em ups And <laughs> this one is high up on the body count like you said there's there's a lot of gore <laughs> and if i think if this had actually really happened there would be many wars declared between <laughs> australia and india and perhaps like uh, pakistan yeah or something. somebody yeah. else down there and then maybe the united states just because yeah cause um, we gotta throw our hat in the ring whenever there's and warfare and in that neighborhood maybe china would get involved in north korea because it's kind of all in that theater so uh if all those people really got killed, that got killed in this movie, there'd be serious trouble. I'd like to say that I'm glad that we ate dinner before the violence really started because that first really violent scene where he goes into the place where the kid's being held mm-hmm. and he's just killing people with rakes. And like everybody's <laughs> got a machete. There's machetes. That and was, <laughs> that was, 
unforeseen. I'm like, we don't have one machete. And like every single one of these people has a machete. <laughs> so apparently there's a machete problem right. in India. There's a gun problem in the United States. And there's a machete problem right. in India because everybody had a machete. And yet no one used it on Chris Hemsworth. Right. He managed to avoid the machete issues. So what did you think before we go into more detail on the <laughs> gore and the blood and the lack of realism? I'm, a, I'm like you. I actually liked it more than I thought it I was gonna. Oh, yeah? Um, I mean, it's not... Nobody's winning Oscars for this thing, <laughs> but... Well, it, maybe the makeup guy is yeah, for the maybe, blood. Oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was much better than just some big dumb meathead most of could movie <laughs> like you know there was there was some good character development yeah. um i liked the relationship between thor and the kid i yeah. thought that was really good um yeah. it was understated but it was good yeah definitely uh i i like hemsworth and i know you're gonna say it was because he's hot and i mean he is really hot he's but, a hot guy but yeah. i think well, he's in good shape yeah yeah i mean he works out he takes care of himself but he's, um he and i are comparable in our workout schedules <laughs> that well, is true why are you laughing I... <laughs> <laughs> but uh so i'm gonna keep going so um <laughs> I, I i think he's he, like i said he's not gonna win any oscars but i think he's a little bit underrated as an actor because mm-hmm. he's kind of in that big dumb meathead mm-hmm like pigeonhole mm-hmm. but I've always enjoyed when he tries to do humor I think he has like a very deft touch like I think he has more tools in his toolbox right. than people are willing to he's got more range exactly yeah. so I I enjoy Hemsworth as an actor as well as aesthetically so <laughs> so I thought he did a good job for yeah. what the role required mm-hmm. so I liked it because uh, so the explosions and the shoot 'em ups you know I'm not a big fan I you know I could take it or leave it but I liked what they did with the characters so the fact that they went into depth about the Chris Hemsworth contemporary or colleague on the other side the the, the bodyguard uh, who was trying to get the kid back and Mm -hmm. they went into his personal life more than they went into Chris Hemsworth's uh, personal life so we heard about his family and we saw his family I thought that was really really interesting Mm -hmm. it's like well there's no way this guy's going to get killed now because we're spending a lot of time or maybe he will get killed and this will be a shocker because we're not used to getting details about these kinds of uh, characters. I also thought it was interesting that one of the kids who plays a really pivotal role in the movie, a very minor uh, character, but plays a pivotal role, we found out about him too. And he uh, ends up doing some some funny business at the end there that is, <laughs> is very, uh, like I said, pivotal. And we find out about him. We find out what... Uh, his background is and we find out a little bit about where he comes from and he's interacting with the mobster guy who's trying to get the kid over the mobster kid uh, his dad so that rivalry is interesting as well so I thought there was a lot of uh, unconventional uh, approaches to the storyline and to building up the characters and a lot of the and a lot of the dialogue I wouldn't say half but a lot of it was in uh, native Indian language which I'm I, I don't know what yeah it, is. it was yeah, yeah so um and so there were subtitles, in other words, for us uh, Yankees. And uh, that was unusual and interesting and added a level of uh, authenticity to it as well. So, And Deca, Deca, which is where it takes place, that's an interesting place too. Like the plot and the, and the, and the setting were, there were a lot of, cro- there was a lot of crossover there with the, the city, the nasty city that is there. <laughs> yeah, just when you thought it couldn't get worse than Indian slums, you end up in an Indian sewer. Right. <laughs> and you can imagine how bad that smells. <laughs> I did enjoy the cameo from uh, the cop from Stranger Things, David oh, yeah. Barber, showing up. Yeah, David Barber. Yeah. He had a small but also pivotal role. I will say when he first showed up, I was like, yay, it's the cop from Stranger Things. And the second time he showed up, I was like, ooh, yeah. this can't. Nothing good's going to come from this. Right. So, right. and sure enough, nothing good came from that. So, I will say I also enjoyed um there was a really long scene when they first realized it was a double cross and Hemsworth is trying to get the kid away from the people who are trying to take him back and it was like this really long uh they were running through the slums and running through apartments yeah. and it was yeah. it was basically like a really long like tracking shot yeah so that was that was really like a steady cam kind of thing yeah totally so yeah that was was really interesting i i I noticed that too and i wanted to point that out is that that was very suspenseful that had Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of uh you know going around corners and and is there a guy there and i mean everybody gets shot except 
Hemsworth and the kid. Right. But you're just don't. It's like a, it was almost like a video game. And the car scene uh, when they're getting they're trying to get away from the uh, the bodyguard guy, and the point of view is within the car, and then you're going mm-hmm. front the you know the front uh, windshield, the back windshield, front windshield, back windshield, and so you're in the car with these people. And the the tension there was really interesting. The special effects were really good, and you felt like you were uh, you were actually in the chase itself. It was it was really well done. I mean, it was it is what it is. It's it's right. explosions movie, and lots of people die, as you might have uh, <laughs> gathered from our descriptions. It's not spotlight. It's not spotlight. No, <laughs> no, it's not spotlight. It's not a cerebral, no, <laughs> brainy. You could you could actually go up and get some popcorn and come back, and you don't need to pause it. It's one of those movies, and but uh, we did every time we got up because I had to let the dog out to the bathroom or whatever. We we did pause it, so that's right. That's saying something because usually Daltz is just like you don't got to pause it when he gets up to go take a leak or whatever, and, <laughs> or go out on the deck and take a deep breath of fresh air <laughs> right. and just sigh. It's like oh <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there was there was a lot of violence. There was a lot of violence, um, but uh, yes. Sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> no, that was all good. But it was it was definitely uh, it was definitely a, a movie that I would recommend. It's number one, like I said, on Netflix right now. And I think as I was watching this, I was thinking we might need this kind of movie right now. Like right. this is a total escapism movie. Right. This is the old fashioned. You know, uh, as we're coming up to the Memorial Day weekend and, and potentially people going back to theaters and stuff like that. Like we're getting uh, looser restrictions and stuff like that. This is the kind of movie that people would be watching at that time of the year in the theater, like a mm-hmm. beginning of summer blockbuster. And I think people are so fed up with being uh, quarantined and stuck in their houses and stuff like that, that that's one of the reasons this movie is so big is because it's just pure escapism. Mm-hmm. It's not a two guys sitting, you know, a, a couple sitting across the table from each other having a dinner time conversation. I mean, this is just, <laughs> this is just a complete escapism. So, well, and it's also, you know, a lot of people are like really angry and anxious right. and stressed right now. And you just want to see Hemsworth kick some ass. Right. You want stuff blown up. <laughs> right, it's exactly. like, okay, enough of this. We need the virus to be blown up. <laughs> right. And these guys represent the virus. So right. I was thinking that very same thing as I was watching. It's like, yeah, I, I could see this. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of taking out of frustrations. There's a lot of vicarious uh, yeah. thrills here. So, and it's it's two hours long. It's it's just shy of two yeah. hours long. It's like one fifty five, but yeah. it's it feels like it's that length, but not in a bad way. It's not like I was looking at my Fitbit like, oh my god, is this thing gonna be over? Like it was. <laughs> it didn't fly by, but it also didn't drag. Right. So I thought it, I thought it was a very good length. There weren't any times in the movie when I was just like. All right, we could cut that out, you know, because yeah. like the one time when Hemsworth and the kid actually stopped and talked, well, you kind of need that because you need to you need to humanize Thor, right? You know, because otherwise he's just some guy out there just killing people, and you don't really know why. So right. you kind of needed to humanize him a little bit, and and it showed the deepening of the relationship of him with the kid, so it made you care about them and care about the kid. And, yep. You know, so so yeah, I I enjoyed it. It was. A, a solid use of two hours of my time. I think it was a good investment of our time on a, a Monday, uh, on a rainy Monday in the Northeast here. <laughs> and the other thing I wanted to mention was um, they had to have a guy like Thor play this character because anybody else would have been squashed in like the first 20 minutes <laughs> because there was so much, like he gets hit by a car twice or something oh like God, that. Right. And, and not just hit by a car, but like hit by a car into another car with such force <laughs> right. that he goes banging into another car. And this is not like the Hulk, you know, <laughs> right. cratering totally. a building or something like that with his body. This is like a regular guy, supposedly. I mean, he's he's buff Chris Hemsworth, but still, right. he's, he's still mortal in this movie. He's not uh, Thor. Yeah, Loki's not playing this part. Right, <laughs> right. And there's no, there's no fragile heroes. And the other guy uh, the, who plays his... Uh, like I said, the bodyguard guy, he was really good too. I thought mm-hmm. he was, he might be a Bollywood star that I, I don't know of. Um, I, I looked him up, but I wasn't familiar with his, his oeuvre. Um, <laughs> but uh, he, he also was impressive to me because he yeah. took a beating. He took yeah. a major licking. Like these guys, and they fight back and forth and they're sticking things in their each other's arms and they're getting hit by cars. And there's, and of course it's an Indian city. So a city in India, so cars are weaving in and out, and right. little scooters are going through the middle of the fight and everything. Right, like that. there's no order. Right, <laughs> there's 
pedestrians aren't waiting for the light. Well, you know? <laughs> and also it just kind of it shows you how many how many Fs the people in India have because they're not like standing back watching. They're like, I got to sell my goods here. Like, <laughs> right. can you just bleed over there for a minute? Right. Like, oh. you know, only not saying it in that voice probably. Right. I, I say, sir, would you mind terribly? If you <laughs> go over to the side there. I'm trying to sell some knickknacks. <laughs> That's exactly how they said that's, that's, yeah. yeah, That's how I read it in my mind anyway. When you were reading the subtitles right. and they were speaking Farsi or whatever yes, it was. Yes, yeah. that's exactly what I was doing. So, yeah. So we both give it a solid recommend. Two corks up. Two corks up. I think we pick up on that last podcast from when we were... Which, if you haven't listened to it, we recently reviewed Netflix productions Uncorked and Love Wedding Repeats. That's the episode before this episode in our podcast feed. So if you are not subscribed, please Why? go to Apple Podcasts or Spotify or Pandora or wherever you get your podcasts. Rate us, review us, listen to us, subscribe. Tell us what you think. Tell us what you want to hear us review in the future. Although, I have it on good authority that we might be doing another podcast right after this one oh, yeah. and releasing it in another day or two. So that means you need to subscribe so we can just automatically pop up in your feed. Stay tuned. And also, by the way, if you have any money to give, send it. <laughs> we take PayPal and Venmo. Yeah, I and, have Venmo. And all sorts of other, you know, old-fashioned drop-it-in-the-mail kind of payments too. Although right now my boss is allegedly having a check in the mail, so that's uh, 12 days late, so maybe we don't give people that option. <laughs> So, yeah, two corks up, I think. Uh, two uh, empty uh, shell casings up. Yeah. Um, two bottles of Jack up. That was, what, was that what they were drinking when he was with the Stranger I think Things it was, cop? I think it was the Indian version the of Indian Jack. The Indian version of Jack. Yeah. Okay. But so. he was also drinking, uh, at the beginning of the movie, he was drinking black something beer. Yeah, in, some in Aussie. Yeah, some Aussie Australia. label. So no, them, them Aussies are st- them them Aussies is tough, man. They can they can put away the booze, and they can apparently withstand cars being <laughs> run into them at high speed. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm fragile. I can't do that. My <laughs> all I could think when that was happening was like, oh man, that guy's chiropractor is just gonna have a field day when he gets back to Melbourne or whatever. There you are you know? with your practical real world <laughs> applications right. to to these fantastic movies. Yeah, it's like, that's gonna hurt. You know? yeah, totally. Well, actually, yes, it would probably kill most people. Yeah, totally. But in but, the movies, no. But Thor, he's indestructible. Thor is indestructible. He didn't have his hammer guy or whatever you call it. That's right, the Mjolnir. The Mjolnir. So, so on that note... Is that what they call it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. The Mjolnir? The Mjolnir. Is that like... Uh... That's his hammer. <laughs> That's not your hammer. I don't want to be hearing that later. Like, hey, baby. <laughs> I got your Mjolnir right here. <laughs> hey, want to handle the Mjolnir? <laughs> Okay, I think that's probably where we should end this podcast. On that note. And for another week, I'm not Coco. And I'm not Dalt. See, I did it that time. Thank you. <laughs>